I should start off by saying I'm not a, a natural evangelizer. I know that that tends to go with the territory of Christianity. Um, and so we're slightly uh, reluctant to, uh, to uh, accept this invitation. But two things, um, two things made me feel I should do it. Uh, the first was a very simple uh, thought that many Catholics are rather um, impressed by Pope Francis so far and have great hope that, that, that he may be able to bring about reform. He certainly talked about that. So to write him off at the very beginning of his papacy just seems to uh, give the man a chance, really. Really. Um, and the second point, really, is that I fundamentally believe that no human being or no human institution uh, can possibly be beyond redemption. Now, the reason that I think that um, is because I'm I'm Catholic, and you know we can we can swap around the words redemption, reform, rehabilitation. Um, and I'm not saying that is a unique position to people who are uh, uh, religious. Uh, I think the moment we start saying any human being or human institution is beyond redemption, we're somehow damning our own humanity as well. We're, we're, we're casting a slur over ourselves. So, so th those words rather caught my uh, imagination. So here I am. Um, the Catholic Church, by that definition, is a human institution. Um, it is full of 1.2 billion people and growing. Um, and I think perhaps we need to specify just at the start what, what exactly the Catholic Church is. And it isn't the Pope. Uh, in charge. It isn't those 115 cardinals who voted. It isn't the bishops and it isn't the priests, or it is not just them. Um, between 1962 and 1965, there was a, a meeting called the Second Vatican Council where the Catholic Church defined what it was in the modern world, and that remi remains the bedrock of our teaching. And what the Second Vatican Council tells us is the Catholic Church is the people of God. We are all the Catholic Church. Uh, we all have a say in this organization. It may not be expressed in traditional democratic form, it actually said we were all priests, as the priesthood, priesthood of the laity and the clerical priesthood. But it, 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 it got away from those old distinctions. So when we talk about the Catholic Church, let's think about the people of God, let's not just think about the institution. Um, my own background is, is Catholic from the very beginning, I've been Catholic for 50 years, um, and I suppose what has stopped me drifting away from Catholicism, although obviously there have been periods when I have, uh, what has stopped me drifting away from Catholicism is, is the Gospels and reading reading the Gospels and reading what uh, Jesus Christ says in those Gospels, which seems to me uh, pretty wise, really, and a pretty good guide to trying to live our lives uh, in, a, in a way that, is, uh, that has some purpose and some point. Um, and in particular, the message in the Gospels that comes over to me is that line about loving your neighbor. Um, it's, it's actually common to all religions. It's what they sometimes call the golden rule and is expressed in phrases like, never do unto others what you wouldn't want them to do to yourselves. And that is profoundly counterintuitive for human nature, I think. We are profoundly uh, selfish by nature, and it challenges that. Um, now, as I say, all religions have that at their heart. So why Catholicism? Well, really, why Catholicism? Because it was what I was born with. It was what I was educated in. I didn't have a terrible experience of it. And I believe very firmly, really, in working with what you're given. Um, other people may convert, may go to other churches or whatever, but I've chosen to work with what I'm given. It doesn't make me a great evangelist, I know, but that, that's why I do it in that form. Um, so let, let's get away from this idea that the Catholic Church is a monolith as well. Um, that, is, that seems to be a view from inside and outside. So when I tell people I'm Catholic, they'll sort of say, oh, do you use contraception then? Because the Pope says you mustn't. And they have this view that we're all sheep and the, the Pope is a shepherd and he tells us what to do. Um, look at any uh, opinion poll of Catholics. They don't, they don't agree with the Pope on any, The people of God don't always agree with the Pope on what the Pope teaches. Uh, that's a very important point to get uh, in that sense. And also from within the in, inside the Catholic Church, um, I've been told more times than I care to uh, remember, the Catholic Church is a, is a club and if you don't keep the rules you can leave. I'm usually told by people who've just joined the Catholic Church, which is slightly insulting having done it for quite a long time. Um, the idea that there are these rules and, and it's all about jumping through, I think that rather demeans the idea of the Church. It demeans any organisation to treat it like a kind of crown green bowling club and that if you don't wear the right, right colour of flannels when you're bowling your ball, you can't be in the club. It is something much more important that the same objection applies to that idea that, that, that people sometimes say people like me are a la carte Catholics or cafeteria Catholics. They, we pick the teachings we know. You know, the teachings about the way you live your life and morality are not like picking between the tiramisu and the profita rolls at the cafeteria counter. These are questions that Catholics live with all their lives. We all live with all our lives. And as Catholics, 
we consider them, we pray about them, we listen to the teachings of our leaders, uh, we go along to the liturgy, um, we listen to what our priests say from the pulpit, but at the end of the day, we make a decision. We're not sheep in that sense. So again, let's get this idea of what the Catholic Church is right. And on some of those teachings, I think the Catholic Church gets it very, very right in terms of social justice. On some, it gets it very wrong. Um, and we, we've, we've heard some of those examples. So yes, it's a dysfunctional organization. Yes, it needs reform. Uh, is it beyond redemption? No. Um, lots of negative things we hear about the, the, uh, the abuse scandal, a, a terrible slur on the Catholic Church, a terrible uh, uh, slur on an institution that claims the moral high ground. And I in no way at all want to uh, suggest that it isn't really the biggest crisis it's faced in modern times. Um, but I think we just need to get a sense of proportion about that. Um, authoritative research carried out by Stanford University by uh, Professor Thomas Plant shows that about 4% of Catholic priests have been, uh, are, are abusers, have been either accused or found guilty of abuse. That's 4%. There are 450,000 Catholic priests in the world. Again, really not negating it. It is the most crucial thing the new Pope has to face. He has to look honestly and deeply in the way that Ronan was saying I sort of agree with Ronan as well so be self-critical about that but it is it is important but let's think too final point about the good about the Catholic Church there are 17% of the world's population are Catholics the Catholic yeah. Church presents 20 pr pr um, provides 26% of the health care around the world now this isn't nuns in Africa refusing to give out condoms these are as, as, as in the, the, the stereotype of the Catholic Church this is practical help and assistance to people where no one else helps them 20, mm. one in six people who go to hospital in America go to a Catholic hospital. Peter Stanford, I, th I think uh, the Catholic you, if the Catholic Church wasn't here, the world would be the poorer without it.